And we're live, guys. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful evening here in Hawaii. I hope it is for the, the rest of you fellows. Boss and Bean, how are you guys doing? I'm Speaking awesome. Of- I'm just- go ahead, boss. No, you go. You go first, brother. I've just been trying to get everything ready to go. So I leave next week to go move in with Dallas and them. So I've been Ooh. trying to scramble and get everything ready. Been busy. Better, better being moving in with Diamond Dallas Page. Uh, it'd be fun to be a fly on the wall for that one. But we'll see it on TV, won't we? True story. Hopefully so. That's it's going to be live, though, right? It's going to be recorded first and they're going to edit it to go later live. Yeah, it's, going to be- it's a docu-series, so they're going to record it, edit it, and then, then go. With five right. different people, it's going, to be, it's going to be different. If you need some intimidation or something, you know, hook me up. I'll come over. I will freaking terrorize some people if you want. You know, awesome. it's always, always help. That would be a great guest spot, man, for you to show up during uh, during the process. That would be. I'm gonna I'm gonna run that one by Paige. I like that idea. I think I think it, I think it could happen. Hell yeah! So guys, we're we're, we're back. Um, you know, we're we're bringing back a gentleman we had with us a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we have talked to him about um, becoming regular with us here on on Talking Tough. Uh, before we bring uh, to him on, I want to say prayers again for, for Flex Wheeler. Um, I think we've all been in touch with Flex one-on-one. Yep. He is, um, he's having a tough time, man. The guy is, he's a warrior. He's a real warrior and he is, uh, he's deep in it. So best thoughts out to Flex Wheeler, our buddy. Scary stuff. Very scary stuff. Yeah. So we have a gentleman rejoining us today who is, doing great in his life, which is just so nice to see in 2022 when so many people are so challenged every day. And, uh, you know, this has been like a, a breath of fresh air and positive energy. And I'm really happy to you know, welcome back to Talking Tough, Kasim Osgood. Go ahead. Come back. <laughs> All right. I love it. How are we doing today, guys? Good. Everybody's good. good. I'm going to ask a quick question. Are you in the bathroom hiding from the kids? <laughs> no. Uh, my, my son, was uh, he had an issue with his little tablet, and he's just throwing a fit right now. So rather than have the background noise, I had to go get him situated and redo it. You know how it is, man. The kid and the technology these days. Since, since oh, tell me about this. Smarter than we are. ever thought about them. Yeah. How old is he? Uh, my son's three and my daughter's four. Oh, jeez. <laughs> So, guys, we, we have a lot of people say hello to us. Chris, Joanne, Antonio, how you guys doing? Thanks so much for watching. We appreciate it. And, Kasim, I think we'll have some fun later. We'll take questions from the people that are watching. So, everybody, stay with us, please. A few minutes in, we'll get in some questions from you all and have some fun. Sorry to interrupt. Please proceed. Good. No, I don't think you were interrupting anything. So, uh, we're doing just great. I'm just looking at, at Spider-Man's butt. I think it's a crazy, you see, look at this Spider-Man. It's a paperweight. Yeah. We have 1,250 of them on the planet. And I've, I have one. And I'm just checking out his book. I, go, I don't know why, because I was just standing like that. And I go like, oh, okay. Well, well so, you know, you're anyway, doing, boss, what, what is that? You're going to get in the mood. What, what is it, boss? It's a Spider-Man. Look. Oh. Oh, wait, let me see. It's cool, right? Hey, do you, oh, yeah, my son would love that. Is, do you yeah. think, can your Spider-Man beat up my Rowdy Rowdy Piper doll? Hey, listen, this is metal, man. It'll beat the crap out of you. I'll heat him up and then melt straight through you. That's what I'm going to do. I wish Rowdy were around to hear you say that, boss. You'd be in big trouble. <laughs> Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Oh, let me run and get my Diamond Dallas Page figure now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, guys, who has action figures? Boss, Bean, you guys must have action figures. I'm going right? to get mine. One second. At least right yeah, here. I want to see it. Bean, you got to have tons of them. I probably, I, at, at, at the market, I, you know, at, at my booth, I probably got 3,000 of them. Ah, I, wanna, you gotta, I want one, man. Send me one, please. Yeah, I got to get one of those. Can, get one of those. Are, are there action figures for NFL Pro Bowl players? I don't um, think I've seen them. I, I have I have a couple of them. They're made them. Uh, I think they were oh, made for upper deck. No, myself, no, Rick. I'm sorry. 
You see, I have one. This is an original one that they didn't want to do. I wanted to be the only guy who smiled. So I have this. You see with the smile. Oh. But this is only there's only one of them because they they didn't want to do it because everybody was serious. So that's why I want to smile. But they didn't want to do it. But at least I have this one. Wait, can you can you, Dude, look can at you hold that closer, <laughs> boss? Can you put it closer? It looks more. It looks more like an evil, evil smile than a happy smile. I'm wondering. Yeah, no, I know. It's just really good. But you know what the cool thing is? Look, it's got all the tattoos that I have. Also, you oh, know, yeah. like uh, like the tattoos I have. To see on on my I, everything they have. Yeah. My shirts. You know, they got the tattoo on the shin. They got all, all these little things on the side. It's unbelievable. They did a really good thing. And the chest hair. They have the chest hair. Look at that. Hey, uh, yeah. hand, hand painted on there too. That's that, right. That is fantastic. Do you have a bunch of those, or are they like no. in limited supply? This is only one because that's with the smile. This one there's a bunch. You know, you can buy it. This one is this is tiny compared to this one. See, it's a little one. Oh yeah. Call it mini me. Bean, Bean. Did Boss just say you can buy it? Is Boss going to make us buy the Boss written no, action no, no, figure? No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I just I have <laughs> people can buy it if they want, but it's, that money doesn't go to me. Trust me. Nada, got it. That's He's already cool. been paid for his part. <laughs> Believe it or not, Rick, they haven't made one of me yet. They paid me for it, but they never made it. Oh, but that's you see such a natural. I guess the what's the company's name? Jerks, Lev? Huh? Jack, Jack, Jack. Yeah, Jack. They paid, Jack. Me. They paid me to guy. make one, but they never made it. The great guys, the great people, free money. Hey, that's why I look at it. It's like you said, it's worse when it's the other way around, you know? They sell them and you don't get anything. Yeah. It, Kasim, you said you do have one or you or you do not have one? Uh, yeah, I had some that were made. It was a, a limited run they made. Um, and I signed a bunch of them at the Pro Bowl, first Pro Bowl I went to in uh, 2008. And, um, but I haven't seen them. Too. But I saw somebody had one on, on um, I think it was Craigslist. They were selling one. Oh, that's cool. Man, yeah. we'll have to gather your fit, all three of your guys' figures sometime and compare the merits between them. That'll be fun. Let's oh, yeah. Have a little bit of action figure debate. Hey, Liv, that my thing. I'm, I'm uh... Yeah, speaking of Craigslist, and uh, my uh, San Diego State sold my jersey to some guy. They didn't even, I told them, I said, if you guys take this down off the wall, it was a jersey that we broke the record. Me and my uh, partner, Jay October, uh, broke the single season record for uh, receiving tandem. At San Diego State, and we still have the SA record to this day. And I told them if they get rid of the jersey, you know, let me know. I'll take that and give it to my son. And it said, Yeah, yeah, they'll do it. Say, yeah, we'll do it to you. And then all of a sudden, it's gone. And the guy hits me up on Twitter saying, Hey, let me know if you have an issue with me selling this on Craigslist. I'm like, uh, Yeah, I have an issue with it. I'd, I'd like to get that back if possible. That's my property. Yeah. Well, that's so crazy. then what happened? What happened next? They, they are trying to contact the guy to get the jersey back, let him know that it was a mistake. That uh, I don't know how he ended up with it, but uh, yeah, I want to know who authorized it to go to this guy. I mean, that makes no I, sense. I have, have a, a I have a solution for you, Kasim. Yeah. If you use the Boss Rutten School of Collecting, um, like you get Boss, you got you got to tell everybody the story of your uh, your website domain this is a good one <laughs> <laughs> so this guy I, I i'll tell his first name i know his first name still his name is frank and he uh, he got my my uh, website my uh, com. so i gave him a call because it, it's available online and he said uh, i said listen I, I want my my name he says, well, they're going to have to talk money. I go, you're not going to get anything. It's my name. You just stole my name. You you, there's, there's, you cannot do this. He says, well, I'm going to have to talk to my wife about it, and I will let you know. I said, okay, let me do this. I say, 15 minutes, I call you back. I say, you talk to your wife. So I hang up the phone, and I call his sister. <laughs> uh, because I had an available. And I say, hey, is Frank home? And he goes, she goes, no. I said, could you tell the boss with the call? And I just say, okay, thank you. I call his mom and dad. Hey, how are you doing? My name is Paul Sutter's Franco. <laughs> and in minutes, he calls me back. And he goes, okay, okay. You know, and he says, did you call my mom and dad? I say, yeah, they live at this address, right? And your and your sister lives at this address, right? And he goes, okay. okay. I say, dude, I don't know what you're doing. I mean, he had Hoyce Grace. He had Mark Kerr. He had a whole bunch of guys. I say, they're not, some of these guys are freaking crazy. They will literally show up. You know, I'm yeah. just seeing it, but I'm not going to show up. You know, but... Uh, it's, I don't understand people who do that. 
you know, yeah. and, and asking money for it. I can understand it by the business. Like there was this guy in uh, in Holland, I believe it was, who heard about that the euro came out, the money, euro money. And he yeah. started saving everything, like euro dollar, euro this, euro that, euro that. And these freaking idiots who started euro money, they started printing the money. And then they realized, oh, we should look at the domains. Well, this guy had the domains and he had to pay them. They had to pay him like millions of dollars in order to get those domains. Now wow. that I can see that is smart. You know, that's the government that, you know, now you're doing a smart thing, but messing around with somebody's name. I wouldn't do that. That that's just, not, this is a big no, no, I wouldn't do it. So yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh boy. No. What a, <laughs> yeah. That, Look at this guy. that all has some serious abs on them too. That thing's awesome. Oh, that's Look at those nipples. That's champion. Huge nipples. Look at that. <laughs> Bean, that's is, is that a sex toy you just put the shorts on? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you you throw your feet and it starts buzzing. <laughs> yeah, the buttons on the back side. Can hey you guys? Let, let me let me ask you about something. Help if you guys would help me deconstruct something that I did right before the show started, I think was pretty stupid. And I, I want to see what you guys say about this. Uh, but before I do that, because Sim, you sent me a text the other day, and I'm like, I got to read that before we start the show because I, I felt it might play into the show. And oddly, it plays right into what I want to ask you guys about from what happened today. So Kasim wrote this. A topic of discussion I was having with my brother just now was about quantifying a win in an argument. The fallacy in thinking you won or lost an argument. There is no quantifiable, no quantifiable evidence in any record or a win or loss. It's all pride and arrogance. And I got into an argument today and I feel like a juvenile and, and I want to deconstruct it. And Kasim, if you would help me with it based on what you wrote. Do you got boss? You have a dog. I know that. Um, do, do you guys have you have dogs, Kasim? Uh, no, I, I have kids in there. <laughs> well, a lot of people, a lot of people are crazy about their dogs. Me, way more so than most. Um, too much so, people would say. And I was at the dog park today, right before the show, and my dog Snoopy got attacked by a big dog. Yeah, and. I sprinted. I'll always take a hit for the team when it's my dogs involved. So I sprinted in the middle, like yelling and screaming. And thankfully, the dog listened and ran away. Otherwise, yeah. I was ready to get in the middle. Yeah. And I hate to say it, it was a big pit bull. I don't like to say that because you know me, I love pit bulls. Anyway, yeah. that's besides the point. So the guy, the owner comes running up. I go, take your dog and leave now. And he did it. And as, and he, he turns around and he says to me, he goes, oh, that's the first time that's ever happened. I'm like, do whatever, leave. This dog could have done some serious damage. You know, yeah. and once the dog's in that mode, they're in that mode. The guy leaves. And as the dog is walking out, he's walking him out slowly, letting other dogs approach him on the leash. The dog full on lunges for another dog, grabs it. So I run up there again and separate. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Now, I'm like, now I don't like how I'm acting. Yeah. Right? And... It was a bigger guy for sure, but whatever. I don't care. And he leaves. And then I puts, he puts a dog in the car and he comes back and he comes straight at me. And he goes, you owe me a fucking apology. And I said, dude, I go, you have a dog and you love your dog. Your dog is acting aggressively, which means you have to leave. That's got to be sad. I go, I'm sorry about that. I wouldn't want to be in that position. I said, I am not sorry about what I said to you. You needed to get the fuck out of here. He's like that. And he starts doing this. He goes, that's not going to suffice. And I said, what end result are you looking for here? And he stood there. I said, because about, and this is where I feel like a real idiot. I go, because about five seconds from now, you're about to get treated like your dog treated my dog. And the guy <laughs> thought it over <laughs> and he turned around and he, a boss, you would have liked that in your early days. Right. <laughs> and, uh, the guy turned around and he left. And, and now I'm like overthinking this about how I acted, how I reacted. What do you guys think? What, what should have I done better in that situation? Well, I, I think first you were kind of uh, you're you're defensive of your dog. And then another dog got attacked. So it was it, it was a, it was a time issue. And the guy wasn't moving with a sense of urgency. So you had to elevate your aggression to get the point across that he's got needed to move with a little more haste to avoid further damage. 
So I think you were acting well within your rights to, you know, stand your ground and make sure that you were affirming that you need to keep the, the park's integrity intact. Yeah, and especially when you how you how you said it, you know, you told me, say, listen, it's your dog attacks, and I feel bad about that, you know, because it's not a great position to be in, but you just need to leave. You know, you can also just put your dog in a car and you can stay. That's okay as well. But the, if the dog is an aggressor, listen, I'm, I'm the same story. I had this thing. I'm walking in, uh, uh, here on the hill. My dog is on a leash and this pit bull, also a pit bull, but he's a good dog. But I don't know this. He comes spare hunting from my thing. And you need to be on the leash there. And my dog is crazy. He's very afraid. So he starts barking and I'm holding him, holding him. And I tell the guy, get your dog on the freaking leash, dude. Why would you have him loose? But I went way too much because then I realized the dog was not a bad dog at all. But now he's there with the kid, and I've been screaming at him. I said, no, why would you do that, you know, because I took the food because six months earlier, another pit bull here in the, in the park went after my dog, and I literally had to step in and push the pit bull away. And me, that threw me right away in the moment that I was in I was the same situation. So I overreacted. But now I'm down there, and I'm going shit, and they would just went up the hill. I know, I felt bad about it. I went home. I typed out the letter really fast. I went back to the place and I typed, put it on the stand there with a the big thing on, hey, dog owner from the pit bull, please read this. But, you know, days later when I came back, the letter was still hanging there. But you see what I mean? I, I felt bad about it. I was overreacting. I was just because I was in that situation before when it was bad. And he was a pit bull. I automatically, I, that's, you know, how you say it, it's, like, you think it's the same thing again, but that dog didn't deserve it because the dog was a good dog, you see? So I just overreacted. But I tried to save it, but unfortunately, they didn't read the letter. Well, with people, they're, they're, they're animals are they're part of their family, so it's like defending a kid. Yep. So, I mean, yeah, we get over over anxious about what we say because it's one of our family members. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I also think that you're actually, when you're going in to defend your dog, you're stepping into the animal kingdom. So you kind of are going to lose a little bit of humanity in defense of another animal. You're going to have to speak an animal language to get the other dog to stop or to control the situation. So it's like you're you're moving yourself from your human element and you're actually getting into the, the canine world. So you have to be a little aggressive and step out of character in order to assert dominance. Oh, I, I appreciate that. Did, did I tell you this guy what happened with me with the – with the big uh, Rottweiler. Did I ever tell you the story? So mm -hmm. it was a long time ago, I was uh, staying was with my ex. I lived there, and the, boy, the mother, we lived with the mother also. We, we lived upstairs, the whole upstairs of us, and the rest from, from the mother. And the mother got a new boyfriend. It was a military guy. And he brought this big Rottweiler with him. And we had this little dog, Speedy was his name. This little tiny dog. And, well, a little a little big muscle. It was, a, it was a crazy dog, but it was a sweet dog. So anyway, there was something going on between the both of these dogs, and I didn't know, you know, and he didn't know. Nobody knew. It was this territorial thing going on. And then one day I said to the guy, hey, shall we go to the dog park? He says, cool. So we go to the dog park, and uh, while we're going, every on every uh, street before we pass it, he, the dog from him has to sit down. He had to look to the left and to the right before he could enter the street. And I go like, dude, it's a dog. Let the dog be a dog, you know. Don't worry about it. But finally we get at the park. And we unleash, we unlock both dogs, and immediately the Rottweiler full in the neck from the little dog, like he's going. Wow! wow. I'm, I'm screaming at the guy. I say, "Dude, let your dog stop!" And he said, "I don't know what to do." I said, "Let you." I'm going to step in, and he goes, "I don't know what to do." So I kick the dog in the side of his face. So my dog rolls out, and now the Rottweiler turns to me. He goes, "You know," and his hand got up, and I freaking low kicked him in the full in the face, right? And he is out. Like, I mean, the guy is freaking out. He thought I killed his dog. And I said, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. And I'm looking at the dog and I see him breathe. I go, no, the dog is alive. The dog is alive, you know. So wow. then the dog wakes up, right? My foot, I couldn't wear my shoe. My, my foot was so thick from kicking him in the head. And then the dog wakes up and he sees me and he goes, Rrr. and I, the only thing I did, I go, what? And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, we're with the camera. Full in the neck, full in the neck and yeah. he was going to town. And it was that I was there that I kicked him on the side of his head and the dog fell out. But otherwise, I could have been completely going wrong. Yeah, that's scary, man. I've been I've been in the middle, I've been in the middle of a few of those myself. I've never low kicked a dog though before, I have to say. Wow. This, this is the thing with dogs, right? The dogs is like I'm I'm something happened to my kids. So listen, I'm going to step in as well. But with the dog, and especially the dog I have right now, because he was beaten when he was little and we rescued him. He was very scared. He would literally shit 
if he is, uh, if people come in from I'm so afraid, you know. So I'm very, very close to this dog, and nobody's going to mess with this dog, you know. So I'm, I'm very, you know, if somebody gets close, I'm right away in there, you know, because I, I, I simply like I said, there are rules, you know. If there's a party, you need a dog on a leash. Get the dog on the leash. Yeah, that's what I do. Oh yeah, boss, I, I feel you, man. You know how I am about my dogs. I mean, you probably you can't see that anymore, but that's when I saved Ramon from the jaws of a big Rottweiler. The dog bit me in the hand. So I got I got in the middle and I actually choked the dog. That's how I got him off my dog. Because I don't think I could throw a low kick that would knock out a Rottweiler, but the choke works. And uh, <laughs> the dog came to, jumped up, and he severed every tendon in the hand. My hand was like that until it got sewn back together. Jeez. And uh, I mean, I'll be the first to take a hit for my dogs. There are kids. You're right. We're not, not talking about beating up dogs. Peter's going to be all over us. Well, you know what? I don't think that's what either of our intent, but I'm you're joking, right. I'm joking, Rick. I think you did the right thing. No, uh, you're right. That's not, a, not the intent. Oh, man. So we have coyotes here. here. And when I walk the dog at night, he's off the leash, and there's coyotes in the park running also. And they thankfully, they take a big beeline. But you're already thinking, what if he goes for the dog? What do you do? And I, I think the best thing, and if this is <laughs> like I'm, because I'm overthinking things because I'm afraid that this dog is going to attack, uh, these coyotes come because they run in packs. What do you do? But I think kicking him in the side. I think it's a way harder effect. Like if you go for the head, and some of these guys that have a really hard head, but you kick him in the side, I think it could be doing really damage against an animal like that because coyotes, they can take their own weight in the mouth, they say, and jump a six foot front. They're freaking crazy animals, man. They have a lot of power. So you're going to need to be ready for that. There was a woman here who, who, uh, who got trained by one of our tra uh, private coaches. And she was letting her two Pomeranians out on the grass, and coyotes came, and, they, and one of her just ripped them out of her hands, and they wow. were gone. Yeah. Wow. And all our rabbits, rabbits also. Our rabbits, we had four rabbits, three of them are gone. And I go, how is this possible? Because I had everything caved off, and I put stones on the cage, so nothing could happen. Well, you know what to do? They start bouncing up against the cage, the rabbit escapes, and that's how they get the rabbit. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, boss, you know, I'm, 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 not, I'm not trying to one-up you with any stories, but I actually fought two coyotes once. I swear I'm not making this up. I was Jeez. in Big Bear, where I used to live, and I had a front yard fenced in, and I would leave my front door open so my dogs would come in and out. I had uh, Ramon and Gogo -Go then. Butterbean, you met my dogs, Ramon and Gogo. -Go. Yeah. You remember them. And I hear this big commotion jump off in the yard, so I got up and ran out there, and two coyotes, thankfully not a pack, but two had jumped the fence. And, you know, I have 50-pound pit bulls. They're not huge, but you wouldn't think coy two coyotes would go for two pit bulls. And yeah. they were at it, and I ran like I always do. I go, literally dove into the middle. And you know, the same thing happens every time my dog gets attacked. I come to the rescue. I'm the only one that gets hurt. It happens every time. So yeah. I, actually, uh, I actually got bit on the knee there, and I have a scar on my knee from a coyote bite. Believe it or not. Dude, did you see that video from the woman with the bear, the big bear, on the on the was walking on the top of the wall and it was going after a dog? And she runs outside and she pushes the bear off the wall and she runs inside with the dog. I, go, I, I saw that. bear. That's the video. I got to check that out. That's good, dude. Push the bear over the fence. Yeah. Yep. Push yeah. over the I fence and then run back inside. Yep. I wow. saw that video. Yeah. yeah, like uh, I said, family member. They are. They really are. I could never understand that until my first one passed. I mean, like I said, it ruined me. It was like I, I couldn't even speak for like two weeks about it because I was so crying. I go, dude, I don't have this with people. <laughs> you know, but I have this with the dog. I was like completely blasted. It was so crazy. And now we have this other dog. So now I'm, yeah, I'm very possessive, I'm very protective, I should say. Right. Yeah, dogs, dogs have that unconditional love. So when you receive that unconditional love, it gets you a, a closer bond than you can with some people come with conditions. But dogs are like, hey, you're my owner, so I love you. I'm here. Yep. What do you do? Roll over, fetch, just go for a walk, and all that stuff. And it's just, it's, it's good love coming in. You, you got to protect it. That's it. It's the only thing they do. It's love you. There's no hate whatsoever. Crazy. Yeah. Wish that well, I got cats because my wife's a crazy cat lady. So. <laughs> Yeah, she's in, she's in the background saying, I am not. She sleeps to three every night, so don't tell me she's not. 
How, how many cats you got wandering around the house, Bean? I would say pro- about 12. Wow. <laughs> the apostle. And do, do you know all of their names? Well, I know the three inside, and then the, okay. the other ones are all outside, so I don't know their names. Right. Uh, I, was, I was asking you. I, I was asking you because I, I thought maybe they're actually your cats and not Livy's. That's what I was trying to figure no, out. No, my poor cat died on me. Uh, they cut up in my chest and just died one night. So it was sad. Yeah. That, I, yeah. It's we had a cat, when that happened. And I, I think I killed the cat without even knowing it. I was the dumbest thing because we couldn't find it ever. So I thought I was smart. I put a little bell around the neck. Mm. And that's, of course, you know, when he was outside, he couldn't <laughs> hide from predators like coyotes because the freaking bell gave it away. And I, I felt so bad about that. You know, I had no clue. I had no idea. And someday he, one day he simply didn't come back. So I'm pretty sure it was because of the stupid thing that I put around his neck. Poor cat. Yeah. I think some neighbor kidnapped him and the coyotes didn't eat him, boss. <laughs> That's hope. Then I got a letter, but, you know, with old tape letters there. They wanted ransom for the cat. <laughs> it's, it's written in pop print. <laughs> so, so, Kasim, so that text, that text that you sent, Kasim, what's um, like, what's the thought process behind that when you're talking about winning or, or not winning an argument? What? Um, why, why did you send that particular text? Uh, a, a lot of a lot of human emotion is tied into vanity, and uh, we always have this unnecessary, like this uh, unending need to want to win everything. And mostly for like athletes, we're very competitive by nature. We're competitive, so sometimes you don't even realize you're doing it, but you might get into an argument, you get into an argument with a wife or a, a sibling or a family member or somebody on the street. And uh, you see it a lot on social media where people start to attack each other and it goes negative south really quickly because uh, people's feelings get offended and then they try to find a way to win the argument to save face. But um, if you really look at an argument, you're trying to get a point across or convey your feelings about a situation and the other person's trying to convey their feelings as well. There's, it's, there's never been a ground where there's a uh, me versus you or a, um, a, a rivalry, so to speak. When you're, when you're talking and you're conveying a point, you should convey that point. And if you're trying to persuade somebody, then your persuasion should come with uh, your, your premise, the premises that you're using to, to back up your, your point. And then in that case, you back up your point, you say your piece. And if they disagree with you, then it should be, okay, well, I appreciate your stance. This is my stance. Let's agree to disagree and let's move on to the next subject. But some, most people can't do that because yeah. they have this, this arrogance and pride where they want to feel like they won. Right. Well, I I ask you, when, you, when you argue and let's say I change my mind, I agree with you. What do you win by getting by, by getting the, the win, so to speak? If, if you won that argument, where's the proof that you won the argument? Yep. There's nothing tangible or quantifiable. Unless you're getting a belt or a, a ring on your finger or money, what is the, like the point of winning an argument? It's like you should you should try to go more towards the middle ground of understanding somebody or just trying to convey your own point. So it's like you're reversing your, your, your mindset. No, 100%. And you know, that's what I always say. It's pride. Everything's pride, 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 pride. You know, that, 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 that's a bad one. And, and yes, you're right. You, you never win. It doesn't matter who wins or loses. And also the problem is once people get angry, emotions start. And once emotions come, all the sense goes out the window. Look at politics right now. You know, the, the, the old friends are gone because it, it, they're so angry. They hear a name, they hear a name, they get angry. Whatever you say, you cannot you cannot make any contact. And that's what happens in an argument. It's it's not about who's right and wrong. It's about winning the argument at the end. And and that's the wrong thing. Like, I thankfully, I always got constructive criticism. It's really hard to take when you're an athlete, you know, because you believe, that's pride again, that what you do is good. You know, but I thankfully, very early on, I realized, you know, I got to stop this. I got to listen to that person. And yes, 90% they're wrong, but 10%, somebody says something that can really help me. You know, so let's be open to that. And once I started doing that, you know, I'm easy to say, I say, stop it, man. I'm sorry. I was wrong. You know, you're right. I, you know, I, now I see it. I'm easy. I'm easy. I say that, but that's because I learned to take constructive criticism. That's where it came from. 
Yeah, I was saying that as well to my brother. I was telling him, I was like, rather than me trying to win or lose or try to imagine my side versus your side, I just try to look for the knowledge. Like you were saying, that 10%. If I can yeah. learn something from you, even if you disagree with me and you have a point of why you feel that way, I want to understand why you feel that way just from my own knowledge to understand that that way of thinking is something I'm going to experience later on. So if I'm going to encounter it again, maybe I can help them understand how they're thinking, give them some more information to better help them understand themselves. So that way, you, know, the, the, you get a, a moral victory in seeing that you can, you can benefit from, from the encounter rather than I won. Okay, you won. So what, what's next? What do you get? Are we, we going to make up this belt for you to have and say you won the argument or what? I love That's that. That's idea. It's like, <laughs> Say, here you won. Yeah. It don't so, work that way. Should be wearing so being, you, being, you've been married for a, a very, very long time. Do you and Libby have like a, a method for argument resolution? Uh, not and really. I, know she's, I know she's in the background. She can hear this too. Of course you can. <laughs> not, not, not really. She, you know, I, she lets me win a lot of times. She lets me win. Okay. You so she don't have to listen to me bitch all day. <laughs> she agreed. She agreed. <laughs> do you ever do you ever let Libby win? Occasionally. Occasionally. Right. When she's right. And she she is right often, but not all the time. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. It's funny. We, like we a... have now three days into thirty years with my wife and I. So we're getting uh, we're getting up there as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. at 30, 30 years you start to, to learn your uh the patterns of behavior and patterns of thinking. Is it is it easier to not step on landmines and like topics come up like oh that's a sensitive subject for her, so I'm not even gonna mention this or yep. like that? It's really like oh, done. We have pretty much zero zero arguments. Like the kids will never see us fight, especially since I stopped the whole drinking and everything. So all the way back because it was always because I was a knucklehead. But you know, once you stop doing that, you know, I mean, since like 2006 or something, it's like peace, complete peace. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And people go like, "How do you do it?" I say, "It's just you know each other after a certain time." I mean, like you said, Kasim, it's like you know, you know, if a certain way. She's going to react to. I simply not going to go to that way, and she has the same thing with me. Yeah, we have, we have arguments. We never have fights anymore. Yeah, yeah, we have that too. Yeah, there's no fights whatsoever. Yeah, I, I know when the bachelor comes on, I go to the other room because if I got to stand there, we just start to hear criticism. <laughs> yeah, that I watch with my wife. I, I love it. It. It's hilarious. You know, what I won't watch is the stupid housewives. I, every yeah. time I laugh, I go, why are you watching this? It's like, it, what does it, you know, this is the thing. Uh, anything you say or do or whatever you watch, is if, it, if it's going to make you smarter or mentally stronger, then you should do it. But it doesn't do that. It doesn't no. do anything. After an hour of watching that, you didn't gain anything. For that, it's the opposite. You know, yeah. you, and I think it is because you see train wrecks from other people. You know, and, and then go like, okay, my life is not that bad. I mean, there's so much backstabbing. And I understand this is also scripted, of course. Yeah. You know, it's not like totally uh, real. But still, you know, I would never say these things behind somebody's back, <laughs> what these ladies or their husbands are doing. Yeah, it's strange how human behavior will, it, it's easy to become a mob. It's very easy. Like you go on social media, you can see the same picture poses or the same catchphrases or like things like memes and things like that it's uh human behavior is so easy to to mold and sway and program yep. and yep. you see it every day and it's 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 sad that individuality is it's sort of it's, it's losing its luster yep i always tell my daughter saying the, the word no is a very powerful word you know because most of the time you say yes because you just want to please the person but deep down inside you don't really want to do it Learn to say no. You're going to feel great. Trust me. If you don't really like it, say, I'm sorry. I don't want to do this. That's it. Now you stood up for yourself. The number one person in the world that you should be honest to is you. You know, you yes. can never lie to yourself. You know, everything you do wrong, you're going to have to look at yourself in the mirror when you're brushing your teeth. That's what I always say. So be honest, you know, and if you be honest, you can save a lot of arguments and a lot of stress. Yeah, I know when I was still playing, I was always saying yes to all the appearances or autographs and pictures, and like it would, it would just it, it would drain you. But I mean, I love the fans, I love the support. You want to show that you care and you're appreciative of that that spotlight. 
But there are times where, like, you know, you get one day off in NFL, which is a Tuesday, and I'm doing, like, four or five different charity events that day, and I barely have time for my family. So, luckily, I wasn't married when I was still playing. But, yeah, it's – it's it's saying no is very powerful because you, you get to save time that you don't get back. You know what my wife always said? She said, listen, you – it's like you care more about all these fans – then you care about your family because you're spending all the time to them. Why don't you spend more time with the family? That's a little bit more important. I started thinking about that. It's true. You know, and, and it is the worst time. The worst thing also with certain friends, you can never please them. You know, like for instance, if you're somewhere uh, and, and you try to hide you like an event, if, if I'm like at the USC event, I'm in Vegas and I'm staying in a hotel and there's only fans. Right. So now that pretty much everybody knows you. And then you go yeah. to a bar. So I'm already sitting on my head, my, my cup shut up, and I start eating. And then one person recognizes you. And then it doesn't matter, man. You're eating and they want pictures, they want autographs. And I said, Could you could you wait till I'm done eating? You know, I'm here with my family. Can I, you know, and then they look at you like I'm an asshole for yeah. saying no. You can wait. So I'm an idiot. I stand up, I'll make a picture with them. But you know, once another person sees that, now we got more people coming in. I go like, or you want to shake your hand? I say, I'm eating a burger. I would I, I pump your fist. Oh, whoa, whoa, you can't shake my hand? Dude, I'm eating. I don't know what yeah. you did with your hand. Maybe you picked your nose. You, I, I, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not a germaphobe, but that I'm not going to do. You see, yeah. but then I'm the asshole again. So it's very hard to please them sometimes. And especially your profession. I mean, you and Butter being together, like being a fighter, people always want to try to, you know, they got they got to figure out their own manhood. So I, I got to go test you and say or say something off the wall. Like, I always want to poke the bear. I know Rick got, has gotten it a couple of times too. That people try to come and poke the bear. It's like, yo, my job is to be aggressive, but when I'm off duty, I'm trying to be humble and, and peaceful and zenful. When people just want to come poke the bear all the time. And I don't ever I never understand that. Yeah. I've actually been in the bathroom stall and people ask slid a picture underneath the, the stall wanting me to sign it. And I'm like, dude, the only thing I gotta sign with you don't want me signing with it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a guy who was, who was peeing in the bathroom stall, and then he walked out and realized it was me, and he walked back. He didn't wash his hands, and he walked out, and I came outside. He says, hey, man, and he wanted to shake my hand. I said, go wash your hands, dude. I saw you didn't <laughs> wash your hands. <laughs> I'm not going to shake your hand. Oh, see? man. Yeah. You see, that's what I mean. You don't know where these hands have been, you know, and I'm eating a burger. I don't want to take the risk. Oh, especially especially now with the whole COVID thing, man. You got yeah, yeah. It's crazy stuff. It's crazy stuff, man. What a crazy life we have, right? Well, Kasim, what was that? Especially with with the what now? I'm sorry. Oh, with, with COVID now. It's, uh, oh, COVID. Yes, yeah, of people are, are people yeah, are very know. sensitive about their, their their private space or their their distance. Imagine how many times back in the day that you've been in situations like, man, that wouldn't have flied now. You or we couldn't have got away with that now. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully our world's on its way back to a kinder, friendlier place. We can all hope and pray, huh? Definitely. That's all we can do, Rick. We can pray, but unfortunately, with the whole internet and the hate and everything that's there, it's it's hard, man. And and if you look at, we talked about this before, anger, uh, vulgarity, whatever it is, all the crazy stuff gets you way more likes than when you want to do a charity event. You know, I talked about this on the show. You know, I bought this picture from a kid. It's like six years old. Has in his diaper, or four years old, in his diaper, he has a fake gun in the back. Uh, and then he's on the phone. And the, the caption says, this kid is way too young to have a phone. You know, so I thought it was funny. And you got like 80,000 people. Everybody loves it. Then I put on a charity event. You know, and to, to get us some money for people who are homeless and we try to help them. And you got like 400 people liking the post. They go, the world is so backwards. Nobody wants to help anymore. It's all about flipping people off and using profanity. Yes, that brings everything. But as soon as you try to be the clean guy and the good guy, you're losing yeah. faith. You literally lose faith. When I came back to the, to the faith, I put something out. They put a story about me. And this is like eight years ago. I was growing 20,000 uh, followers a, a, a month, like for years. It was going up, 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 up. And I remember it was like 530,000. As soon as that article came out, at least a year and a half, I, I lost people. And then it stayed that same. It did not grow at all anymore. Just because I tried to be a better person. I go, like, this is where that it started finally 
start coming up because then you get other fans who who are think the same as you. But it's just really weird to wrap your mind around that when you do something good, nobody really wants to support you. It's all about the being the bad. It's very sad how the world is right now. So what um what are you guys doing actively in your lives right now to uh, to be to be of service? Like I have that I have that site. I think you know that's called We Win, and it's for people that are either battling stage four cancer or have survived it and are trying to have a life after that. And it's set up to support them. And I always have about 10 people personally in rotation that I'll talk with in a given week that going through that. So like that, that's my service and I enjoy doing it. I don't publicize it. Um, but it's, it, it's, um, it's self nourishing for sure. And, and I, and I do get a lot of notes of appreciation. So that's nice. It's nice, especially now boss in light of the world being the way that, you're saying that it is. Yeah. Um, what are you guys doing to be of service on a regular basis? I think in a four mile radius, I think every homeless person knows me by name. Um, I actively get out in the local community around myself and just take them all under my wing. Hey, what do you need today? Are you good? Do you want to go here? And I got one of the guys I know, uh, his name is John. He's a magnificent horticulture major. He's an old, older gentleman, but he loves gardening. So um, there's a local liquor store who needed to get their sidewalk uh, redone. And I took him to Home Depot and got a whole bunch of tools and stuff and said, here you go, man, I'll pay some money to do this. And he gives him something to do. And he was talking to his, some of his friends uh, that were homeless about me. And I sort of came and met them and just try to get out active and ask them, you know, what do you need? And more than just give us some money, but like sit down, have coffee with them, talk to them about their story, give them that, that human contact back. I think it's, it's vital to have human interactions to, to keep your humanity. It's Where are you living? I'm I'm in uh, Azusa over in uh, Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do know. Once a month, we uh, at the end, uh, the last Friday of the month, we go also feed the homeless, and we do that. People make sandwiches, and we go out there with waters, and uh, we we hand them out with socks and tampons for women. Believe it or not, that's a hot commodity and socks and all that kind of stuff. And like you said, Kasim, it's you know, it's you. It's for them. It's not about the food. They love it, but it's the interaction. They love it when you come there. You know, you know these guys now, and they start talking to you, and they they get rid of their story. They just want to talk because no, everybody's afraid of these guys. They think they're crazy. You know, and a lot of them have mental problems, but they're sweethearts. I have yet to meet the first bad one. You know, so uh, yeah, that's what I do. But uh, the same as you said, I'm also I'm I'm not putting it online, and I put you know yeah. I, I just do it. And we'll just see. keep it local. Yeah, I, I go to I get to go to Seven Eleven and I buy a lotto ticket and a coffee in the mornings and he's there sometimes he already has a coffee and a lot of ticket for me and it's just it's oh, funny like, hey man you always give me stuff so here i, I give it to you he said, but if you win we got to split it right i said oh definitely <laughs> and then we'll split it. Oh, I yeah. love that. Give them something to look forward to every day it's just it's fun to get that human element back into their lives yeah if we can ever get being if you and i could ever get out to los angeles and and, and boss I, I told you about this oh you wouldn't be in a met this guy before because, you know, I have a friend in L.A. His name is Dion Joseph, and he's known as the Angel of Skid Row. He's the uh, sergeant on the LAPD who is in charge of the entire L.A. Uh, Skid Row beat. And he's um, he's offered, like, any time, if we ever want to go, he'll take us out for a shift for the day. And you really get into what's happening in downtown. We should have him on the show, actually. He'd be great yeah. to have on. I would love, yeah. love to go over there. Yeah, we'll do that. Next time, I'm in, next time I'm in Los Angeles, I'm going to make a point of setting that up. We can all go and do that. That'll be cool. Go to, go to Midnight Mission, visit the people there. Bean, you ready to go walk the roll, man? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> we'll put yeah. guys keep me up going around so I can walk them far enough. They'll, they'll go nuts over you over there. It'll be great. That would be amazing. That would be great. We did this one day away thing, uh, which was um, – also held by Justin Bieber and Gomez, and like a lot of artists who didn't ask any money for it. So what they did is for a week, you understood. And we did, we all went for a week and cleaning up the street at Skid Row. And like, I mean, can, you have no idea the kind of trash that's on the street there. It's just unbelievable. And after, it's so clean. And all these people, when they come outside, man, they're so, they're so happy. They say, man, thank you so much for doing this. And we did that for a whole week. And they gathered, I believe, I believe it was 26,000 people across America. 
everybody came to help, and the, and the, the price what they were going to get was a free concert with Justin Bieber and all these other people. You know, so that at the very end we went to the concert, and uh, and that was the pay. You know, to 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 help there for a week, and that was, I thought that was a really great event, and a lot of people showed up. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that, that's what's lacking. Where you know, we, we we talk about a lot of the problems that we have as as uh, society. There's a lot of la there's a lack of creativity because something like that is very creative. Like, let's give a free concert. Imagine if, um, imagine if you know Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg get a free concert, and you, everybody come and clean up, and you get in free to the concert afterwards. You know, that's, that's I mean, that's powerful. That's yep. everybody using that, that 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 platform for good. I was like, we're going to figure out something to do with talking tough down there. Now, now the wheels are turning. We're going to come up with something good. Stay, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Hey guys, um, I, I hear some interference. If anybody, yeah. anybody else hearing that interference on the audio? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if if anybody is logged on to this with more than one device, just log off one of the devices. That's usually what it'll be. You log on from an iPad and an iPhone or a computer. So two yeah, devices will cause that. Yeah, it's on the laptop. Okay. As long as we only have one each, we're good. All right. Just wanted to mention that. No, it's that. not me. I'm, I'm not even on my phone, so. Okay. All right. Just wanted to, just wanted to say so, just in case. This, this is the Talking Tough podcast. I have a question for you. Um, Vladimir Putin, Putin saying that he's going in as a peacemaker, but he's really being a bully. What do you, what do you, what's your take on his uh, his guys of going in peacemaker? Oh boy, well, because yeah. Sim Osgood, our new possible co-host, has just crossed the line of our no politics rule. But what the hell, <laughs> right? Um, boss, do you want to take that first? I, I definitely have an opinion on that. Should we go there first of all? Should we go? I, I mean, there? not from the sense of politics. I mean, just from the humanity side of it, like. Do you think that that's something that would fly as a human? I mean, do you think it's it's right to do that? From a right or no, wrong side? I, I don't think it's right, but you know what? I don't know the ins and outs, but I, I, I just think it's, it's it's not a good thing. But hey, that's, uh, that's me sitting here. I don't know anything else. What's going on in the whole freaking world? Because that's the thing. We watch the new left and right. It doesn't really matter. We never know the truth. It's yeah, all no. crap and it's all lies and it's all crap. I don't even watch the news anymore. You know, because yeah. it, it drives me insane. I can't sleep. You know, the shit that you see on TV. I mean, why don't they make it good? You know, where you wake up in the morning and have only positive news. And in the evening, you go to bed with the same channel, positive news. That's what I do much. You know, helping people see what's going on. But it's all be done. And again, it attracts the most people. If there's horrors and death happens, and it's crucifying people. And I, I don't even want to say what, what, what I heard. And it, it is so disgusting. But that's what people tune into, you know. That's how they get the biggest ratings. So that's what they do, and that's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah, my take on that is, I, I'd like to say that I, I completely have a mind of my own. But you know, boss is talking about media. We're we're influenced by what by what we see. Um, I I don't watch the news, uh, video, visually at all, and I stay far far away from Fox and from CNN because they're on opposite ends of the, of the pole, and I know that. They're very opinionated. I, I do check in with the written word, the, the evil internet, and I look at very briefly the Times of India, London Times, Al Jazeera, which is not a terror, not a terrorist publication, by the way. It's just a publication out of the Middle East. So I, I look for consensus from those foreign um, publications about what's happening here mainly. But then you see what they're saying about the rest of the world and. I'll tell you, my, my take on Putin has always been the same. He's um, he, he's an autocrat, I think. Look, I don't know. Like I said, we don't know for real. But my, my take is he's an autocrat. He craves power. And he's looking to reestablish the USSR beginning with Ukraine. And he's looking for anything he can do to, to, to say he was provoked to go in. So I believe, you know, being influenced by the media, by what's being reported, but I believe he is seeking or even creating incidences to justify his going in to create peace. That's what I think is happening. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is like you, you claim to be a tough guy or you want to promote toughness and power, but you all, like Bob saying earlier, you, you're lying to yourself. Like you're really going in there as, as a peacemaker. You know, you know, if you're if it's about peace, you're messing with a country that didn't even bother you at all. Like this thing came out of nowhere and. 
you know, like if you're gonna be a tough guy, then be a tough guy, but be honest. Because don't go in there and say you're going for peace. Like, why would you send your military if you're going for peace? Send a send a delegation of of um you know politicians to come and talk, have a, a meet, a summit or something. It just doesn't make sense why people want to like they want to show power, but it's behind lies. It's not that's yep. not like, tough guys don't do that. That's it. And the end result potentially is very scary. I mean, now, the uh, the woman that I'm seeing now is from Kiev in the Ukraine. She lives in the U.S. Uh, her family's all back there. They're she's terrified. Yeah. And this thing has um, this has real real wide reaching potential uh, fallout if this goes down. So yeah, it'd be it'd be nice if the guy could find the truth in himself. But uh, I think we're not seeing that unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Well, Rick, let's answer some questions. Uh, let's see. Well, we have to get to do today. So, is there any questions out there? Anybody wants to know? Oh, my question for me that never happens. Why wasn't there an effort to unionize wrestlers? Okay, that that's a pretty easy answer. Um, wrestling for years and years, for decades, was a one uh, one company sport, and. <laughs> The, it's controlled by one family, one in, individual, if you will. And I like Vince McMahon, so please. Um, Vince has been good to me for the most part. How, that's political. But the thing is, he owned, he owned the game. He had no need to unionize. If he didn't unionize, he could run the show exactly the way that he wanted to without having to adhere to any policy. That's it. It's a pretty simple answer. There is a um, There's a second company now that's – arguably competitive AEW, whenever a second company comes along, you start to hear the talk about unionization again. But at the end of the day, the wrestlers, they're under contract to one or the other organization, and they don't want to rock the boat. Um, Because, Sim, you work for a team. Are they independent contractors? I'm sorry? Are are the wrestlers considered independent contractors? Yes. They, They are absolutely considered independent contractors but if you look at the definition of what an independent contractor is it's pretty obvious that they're in fact not independent contractors so it's it's been a classic conundrum for 60 70 years now they're told where to be be there contract what's that been they are until they get locked into a contract (laughs) well yeah yeah but you know they, they sign these contracts but the contract is an independent contractor agreement, believe it or not. That's exactly what it says. Yeah. Yet yet they're told where to be, when to be there, what to wear, how to present their character. So again, you know the definitions of the law for independent or employee. So it's if it ever goes to court, um, who's a gentleman that was uh, uh, – it'll come to me later, not Marco Rubio. Another guy was making big noises about going after WWE – should Biden be elected into office because the guy was going to try to become the Secretary of Commerce? I don't know if you know who I'm talking about or not. I can't even remember his name now. But um, there, there was a, a big push before the last election saying that if the election went a certain way, that the pro wrestling business would finally be changed and the guys would become employees with benefits and so on and so forth. But yeah, sorry. It was a long answer to a short question. Too much power in one person's hand or two person's hands. That's why there's no union. Is there a severance pay for wrestlers? Like they, they don't have any benefits, do they? Like uh, retirement, pension, anything like that? They they don't. No. The um, I, I can say this: they're they're being better taken care of now than yeah. they ever have been in the past. If they're injured, they're being paid while they're injured. You know, for a guy who played NFL, you're playing. Well, yeah, of course. But um, it wasn't always that way. Yeah. And they're um, you know, they're 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 being looked after a lot better now than before. But there are no um. There are no benefits, no. On the UFC front, boss, is it is it a similar situation? Same yeah. thing. You have yep, same thing. And, and everybody just keeps doing it so that nothing can change. You know, there's not yeah, organization right. that's really good as well. So uh, but like I always said, you know, I knew that I was fighting in Japan. If I wanted to be known, although I beat some UFC champions already over in Japan, I knew I needed to go to the UFC in order to get my name here. You know, yeah. and it, and it worked like magic. I mean, look, it gave me my whole freaking career. It gave me prize fighting championships and commentating the movies, everything I did. It's kind of because I went to the UFC. So that's the payoff, you know? Yeah, you yeah. know, people complain about money, but still you're going to be known. And, and, and that will help you if you want to pursue something else with a lot of fighters should start thinking about 
while they're fighting already, what are you going to do after this? You know, this yeah. is important. Uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people don't do it. You know, we all believe because it's egos, it's pride. And I was one of those. Thankfully, injuries took me out of my uh, out of my career. And that's why I, I, I retired with like 22, uh, unbeaten streak of 22 fights. You know, and people go, oh, my God, you stopped exactly when you were at the top of your game. I said, no, that was literally the Lord giving me injuries and saying, hey, it's enough for you because I would have been that knucklehead who would kept fighting and eventually you are going to lose because you're facing yeah. guys who have the age. But going back to the UFC, yeah, it's, you know, it, it, they can still get away with it. So why would they change it? You know, if you're a businessman, I mean, it, it's, it's a logic thing. Uh, would I have fighters more? Yeah, but then the fighters need to do something and they don't. You know, so it's uh, it just stays there. So it is what it is. Yeah. For the NFL, it works in inverse because we're we're unionized, but it also it creates a, a problem for older veterans where you there is a minimum contract value that you have to have to respect for this, the collective bargaining agreement. So there's a vet, veteran minimum that they have to pay you. So they go out and look for younger, cheap guys to replace you. So you get priced out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's again power. You know, it's and, and uh, being, no, no such thing as a boxing union. I'm sure is there. No, they tried to put them together. I mean, it like it like like it is what it is. It's not gonna. Like, there's too many guys out there willing to take that spot and not be union. So it's yeah. It wouldn't. I mean, California at one time was taking so much out of everybody's purse, and once you had so many fights, so many rounds, you get that money back as retirement. I paid thousands into it. I've never seen nothing out of it. What? Really? Huh. All right. But look at the screwdriver skills, what they do. Why can't they do it at the sports? It's really not that much money to give these guys insurance to later on, you know, get money. It's really not that much money. It's 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 very easy to do for an organization like that. Just well, money. that's what California, the, the state commission was taking money out of everybody's purse, but nobody's seen nothing from it. Maybe a select few, but I've never seen nothing from them. Do you ever file for a uh, workers' comp in California? California has the best workers' comp. So if you sign a contract in California, you qualify for workers' comp. Well, I was injured. I wasn't injured. No, yeah. you got injured. If you fought in, a, in a, a ring, you've been injured under the guy, under the premise of the law. You've you've had damage done to your body. Wow. Yeah. So that's you know, what you there's there's a phone call to make tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it is what it is. I mean, they made their money, everybody gets their it's like the uh the people that sang some titles. You know, if you're gonna fight for that title, you have to pay so much money. I was one of the few people that finally said, I'm not paying that sanctioning fee. Keep yeah. your belt. Delahoya fell in pursuit, Floyd Medweather fell in pursuit and after I finally told him, I no, you need me worse than I need you. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yep, good point. Well, Bean, go go get that workers' comp, man. <laughs> go get it. Go get it. Somebody else God, to work for me, right? What, what what's everybody's big hopes for the next week? What's the next week look like for everybody? My hope is getting moved to Atlanta safely and then and enjoy the, the people I'm moving in with. And you're moving right oh. into the house with the other five or so people, right? Yeah, moving right in with them. Luckily, That's I got a downstairs bedroom, so the others are all upstairs. So, Diamond took care of me on that one. Good. Nice. Right. And the most importantly, did you write a bidet into your contract? I haven't gotten the contract, but I told them I want one. If not, I told them I was going to bring one. They're going to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> That's already been talked about, believe it or not. <laughs> can't, can't have being without a bidet, man. That just will not work. Nice. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're um, we're uh, pulling up the potatoes and the onions out in the garden. So the kids are super excited. We got it marked on uh, February 28th that we're harvesting the uh, little girl outside. So it's going to be fun. How much are we Sounds talking about? Good. How many potatoes? Uh, we got about 15, 20 potatoes out there and about maybe 30 onions. Oh, nice. Yeah, so <laughs> the kids are super excited. We get their little gardening hat and little uh, tools. They, they love it. They're <laughs> excited for this week until the next two weeks they're eating nothing but potato soup. Oh, they put the potato mix with the broccoli, put the butter on it, put it in the oven, pops it out. They love it. Awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn 57 tomorrow. Yeah, party at Boss's house. Let's go. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So that that's my life. And then I'm going to Texas on Friday. I'm going to go, uh, you know, look around there a little bit. So what what's happening in Texas? Oh no, we're just looking at maybe uh, moving over there. So uh, uh, yeah. where yeah. would you move to? Where in Texas? I don't know, like New Brownfields or Fredericksburg or San Antonio, something around there. Um, yeah, a lot but, cheaper to live there, boss. A lot cheaper to live there. I know. I mean, we're looking at a house right? with five acres. I go, oh, sign me up. You know, now you got your own land. I mean, I just, there's water there. You got your own water. You see, self-sustained. That will be something I really would like to have. Also, what Kasim is doing, I would like the vegetables and, you know, even animals. You know, in your yeah. own thing, you can hunt. I mean, you got a freaking bow, a compound bow, and, and it, let's just see, you know. So I uh, have a, a good buddy of mine lives there. He loves it. Um, maybe some other guys are going to come over. So, uh, yeah, let's check it out see what's going on. Nice, oh, man. Good luck with that. I love it. I love Texas. I like Texas. Yeah, we were looking at the Westlake area, too. So California yeah, no, is all around. No, it's beautiful. But, but you know, like I, I give this example the whole time. You know, my wife and I were there like a couple of months ago. And I was talking to these two guys who came with a truck, a big truck. They had to move a fence or whatever it was. And um, they, they both can stand there with the ball caps or the hats. And they're, you know, they're talking to me. And as soon as my wife came over, they both took the ball cap out, ma'am. You know, I mean, that should be here in California. You yeah. see? Respect. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, I really enjoy, guys like that. So, uh, and I was just yeah. right away, the first two guys. And I thought, okay, this is this is cool stuff. That's what I yeah. like. Well, good luck on that, and happy birthday, boss. We could yeah. um, we could offer to sing for you, but that probably would not be pretty. <laughs> you are recorded because that's going to hunt you. <laughs> oh man! Yeah. Well, guys, it was really really good next seeing week. all of you again. Next week, listen to me. Next week, we got to have Diamond Dallas on. On the on the cast next week when I move in with them. So oh shoot, that's gonna be crazy. Yeah, you know, what what day do you go out there, Bean? Do you know your arrival day yet? Monday or Tuesday. I'm going out there Tuesday. The first. You know what? I'll reach out to Paige and see if he'll come on on Wednesday. Um, Kasim, do you know Diamond Dallas Page? Um, I don't know him personally. I, I met him uh, at WrestleMania up in um, San Francisco when it was up there. Right uh, you're friends with uh, Rikishi and uh, Rikishi. <laughs> around. Oh, you're friends with Kishi? No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my oh, family yeah. is his family down, down in San Diego. He's a good man. Yes. I've known, oh, yeah. known him for a long time. Good, good, good dude for sure. Yeah, Bean. So we'll reach out to Paige, see if we can have him join us uh, next week. And then, I'll uh, already be there. So I might as well get him drug in there. Boss, you want to translate that for us? No, I was looking at it. There was a Dutch guy. No, he said just congratulations with your birthday. Greetings from, uh, from the Netherlands. So, thank you, Al Hans. Uh, hello, good night. <laughs> ah, there we go. We had, we had some yeah, Dutch I comments. Was like, uh, I was looking if I could reply on it, but as soon as you click on it, it shows up on screen. I didn't know that. Ah, right, right. Well, and more nice. people. Mark Shelberry, thanks, everybody. Holy, everybody who's saying it. Thank you. Great seeing everybody. Kasim, will you be able to join us next week if we have oh, Dallas Page on? Definitely. I'm in. Right on. Good. Right, and boss, happy birthday, birthday Bean. Safe, safe travels. And uh, we'll see you all next week. week. All right, Vatos. Yeah. Take care. Y'all have a great week, my friend. All right, everybody. Bye.